Guys, it looks like it's working. <coughs> Let me go tell everybody on Facebook that I am online. Okay, I'm going to wait here a minute and see if, if anybody shows up. I don't see anybody yet. I was testing it over on my laptop and I was getting a reverb. Okay. What we've got today is I've got two blanks that I can work on today. Let's see if I can get these over here for you. Let's bring this down for you to be able to see. We've got a green one and a blue one. Pretty cool. The blue one is an ocean blue with a lot of interference. And the green one is a kind of like an emerald green, jade green with a lot of burl in it, like a ton. And <clears throat> I went to the pot a little bit ago this morning since I got up and I was working on this particular one and I pulled it out of the pot. If you can't see from here, this thing shifted on me inside the pot and the back of it is now here the bottom is here which basically renders this thing now like totally worthless it's it's junk now it's a paperweight 
So they want a really nice piece of wood. And, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, hey, Gary, um, why don't you do something different? I said, okay. I sat down and created, and I built some blue snow on this really pretty piece of bro. Put some red glitter on it and a lot of interference in it. And it moved on me. All right, let me go tell a couple of guys that were online. Okay, I just sent a message to Craig and to Tom, letting you guys know I was online, and we'll see if anybody shows up. Chances are, just so you guys know, if you come back and watch this, uh, probably I'm going to delete this one, because we're going to be covering a lot of material that, you know... I really don't kind of sometimes want to get out there. And I don't know what you guys are going to ask me, so. Let's get suited up. Let's do the green one. <clears throat> this is an expanding collet. I've already cut the hole out. That goes inside. Expands out to hold it in place. Then this is the headstock collar. <clears throat> Tighten this bad boy down.
or just a little bit too low. Ah, bingo. The reason I'm on this one is um, I basically posted a question on Facebook just a little while ago. <clears throat> basically said, um, so what do we want to do today? And a couple of guys said, let's do a YouTube video. Okay. Well, uh, here I am. Maybe I don't see these guys. Well, I'm going to press on. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to take all these corners off here. Because these bad boys get sharp. And they like to attack. Got my glove on to protect me. Always you want to start this thing. Get it up to around 1,000 RPMs. Then you want to check it to make sure that it is secure. It's not going to go crazy on you. Then I'm going to turn it up to about 1,600 RPMs to get this corner. Okay, corners are gone. Okay, one of the things I would want, I, if somebody was else on here, <laughs> I'd be asking, do we want to make this a big boy, medium boy? Probably a big boy. Emerald green? Yeah.
No, I don't have the virus. I had a cough. guys can kind of see when I'm looking at how this opening comes in to get that low opening but yet I got to get this out so I want to keep as much of this low ending here as I possibly can to give it that uh, flowing off the side effect I still want to take it down just a little bit more. I had a customer. What's up, Mike? I'm going to wait for this air compressor. Hey, Michael, today is just kind of a casual Friday. We're just having a cool little discussion, you know? way we set it up and then the guys that wanted to do this they haven't shown up yet thanks brother I thank you for enjoying it anyway I had a guy I had a customer that emailed me uh, yesterday day before yesterday 
he told me, he said, listen, you know, I got hands that are just monsters. And he told me basically the size of a glove that he wore, and it's like a double X. And I went, oh, you got paws. And he asked me, he says, you know, have you ever thought about it? Would you make me a handle head, handle, uh, somewhere in the 46 to 47 millimeter range? Now, that is a very large handle. So we might just do that for this guy. We're going to call this a monster, not a big boy. Okay, I still got a little bit of room, a little bit of work here that I need to work out. Here, I want to get this little ridge right here out. So let's take it down just about another two or three millimeters. Okay, we got that ridge out here. So, to keep this proportioned, Keep this thing proportioned in size so that the visual on it stays the same. We're going to have to add a few tricks to it. Call it the Hulk. Hey, I like it. <laughs> That's good, Michael. We'll call it the Hulk. This is already a 28 millimeter hole, so it's it's actually cut for a 28 millimeter knot. So that's already a given. Uh, you know, I probably could have gotten away with even even doing a 30, but um, I called my knot supplier, and they're telling me that, you know. The majority of their knots right now are in the 26 and 28 range. <laughs> so, all right, what I'm planning on doing here <coughs> is I'm either going to make a bulb here, you know, it's completely a bulb, kind of like a blooming onion, or I'm going to make what I call a squatted mushroom, which is a bulb, but it's got a lower peak and a sharper drop. And both of them are super nice. And I'm thinking more on the lines of uh, a mushroom drop bulb on this one. Hmm, cool. Okay. Let's make a bulb.
Not too bad, huh, Michael? All right. That's just to kind of give me an outline. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to build a cove here for the actual finger. Now, just so you guys can see this, this is ground zero for me. If you see this shape, this is what I'm going to be going for. This is a actual shaving brush handle that I recreated that is coming from a 1950s era in an Italian barber shop. That's what this design's from, that shape. So if you see me referencing it a lot of times, that's what I'm doing. I'm making sure that my lines are perfect. I loaded a bunch of uh, Okay, that's I'm going to keep this size for a big hand. I'm going to keep that. So now, if we're going to cut this bad boy off, I really probably should step it up just a little bit more. So now, if we cut this bad boy off right here, that is going to keep that burl that's inside of this intact like a monster. All right. Yeah, it's working.
we at on this? <coughs> Alright, we're at 51. <coughs> we're at 51 millimeters right now. And it's not going to stay at 51 because i got to shape it. But yeah. This will still come out just a little bit after I shape this thing. So now... I need to take a little bit more out of that center. still need some work right there along that ledge I want that perfect line yes all right so now we've got our general outline done it's LLO. Okay. You see this resin? Well, let me wait for the compressor. Okay, you see this resin, how it's coming out here? Yeah, some of that's going to go away, some of it's going to stay. But, what I've got here is a absolute monster for a handle. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking for any holes, cracks, defects. anything that's going to cause a problem okay let's go ahead and get this lip shaped is beautiful all right
All right. We got all of that cleaned up. And I thought that was a crack, and it's not. Okay. Realistically, the only thing we got left to do now is to pretty much part it off and uh, sand it. Again, for those that are turning in late, I don't see anybody yet, but the reason why I've got this bad boy so big here in the back, I mean, this is a monster. What might call it? The Hulk. The reason it's called the Hulk is because I have had people ask me, hey, Mr. Geary, yeah. Can you make one of these for the big guys? So now, so you guys can kind of see, this is a 48 millimeter. Let me get it up here. That's a 48 millimeter head. And this is 44 millimeters. So there's a full four millimeter difference between here and here. That's something I normally do not do. It's just aesthetically wrong. But for this circumstance in this application, I'm making a you know a 48 millimeter head back here. Just for these guys. So now Uh -huh. Be right back. Looks like I got something that got stuck on this. Like glue. Okay, now it's perfect. All right, I'll put you up in a minute. What I need to do now is make this thumbprint back in the back. I'm not too much of a coin user. I find them too expensive. Don't really like them. All right, we've got a perfect tension there. So now I'm gonna shape this just a little bit. Perfect. It's a large pattern back there.
All right. Okay. For lack of a better word, it's sanding time. Okay. Uh, we're here. You have two live streaming streams running. I do. Uh, does the depth of the thumb print change the way that the light reflects in the resin? No, Michael, it really doesn't. Um, it really, really doesn't because light travels and that little small indention that's right here does not change the way that it lights up inside. Hey, Tom, what I did uh, on beginning is I started one and literally my software is called OBS. It's basically, a, it's an open source live streaming software. It locked up about three times, so I had to, uh, I had to restart the computer, I had to get a new streaming key, I had to re-put it back in all together, rebuild it basically, and started it over. So that's what I had to do. Uh, and I'm gonna be deleting that one as soon as I'm done with this one. Uh, but da -da 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 cool. All right, so let's get some sanding stuff. Let me get all of this heat retention stuff off of me. This jacket, it's kind of like a raincoat, but it keeps all of that uh, dust off of me. All right. Let me go clean my water real quick. All right, I don't see any questions. Let's take this down to around six, 700 RPMs. There we go. All right, we're gonna start out with some 220, so we I can shape this, get all those scratch marks out of it, those digging marks. Tom, I waited for you to come on to tell me which one your daughter wanted to do, the pink one or the blue one. I mean, the, the green one or the blue one. So tell your daughter I'm sorry. Michael, Tom's got a daughter. Who likes watching these? So we get her involved.
Okay, 220. No, that's 320. Oh. All right, we're going to skip right into 400. Michael, you starting to see this color? Let me come over here just for a second. Uh, colors, the depth of the thumb. She said blue. <laughs> She's explaining the process to my wife now. Uh, green is good though. Love the emerald green. That's uh, awesome. Wish my kids would watch with me. Well, little parenting thing. Make it fun. Uh, not everybody can watch art being created. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just, don't forget, I'm going to probably delete this one because of all the interruptions that I've had. But you got to remember, guys, just a redneck with a lathe. Um, let's clean this up and let me make sure so I can see where I'm at on this. I'm at 400 grit right now. But I want to verify... I've gotten all the scratch marks out. So, how we do that is you take just basically a napkin, paper towel. This is called denatured alcohol. What you're doing, since the natured alcohol is fuel, what you're doing is in the event that this thing doesn't turn out right, you've soaked it enough to where if you want, you can take a match to it. Well, I was going to go there and turn it off. Look how this thing's going to bleed down to this all the way in here. You got a high back here. I got burl that literally is sticking right there. I'm within about one tenth of a millimeter from hitting that piece of burl right there. I got lucky. More bro right there. Okay. Let me verify this is not a crack. Nope. It's not. Okay. I see all of the cut bridge lines are gone. So I can easily go through a 600 on this one. My sanding on this bad boy is going to be f simple and easy. My goodness. It's one of the easiest sandings I've done in a month. Okay, woo doggy, this is a lot of light going in this thing. Alright, I want to cross sand what I've got on this resin real quick. When I say cross sanding, 
I've been sanding this way, right? And so now all of the micro lines are going this way. So when I come up here and I cross sand it, it is harder for the human eye to see that once you do that. So, you cross sand it, and that way it's harder for the human eye to see any scratches. Just very lightly, and you're set. Okay, so now we're going to go back to denatured alcohol. So I'm going to clean this bad boy up. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. <laughs> Looks like a caramel apple. Yeah. Okay, what I'm doing right now, I just prepped it. And this product that I'm putting on it right now is called Sanding Sealer. It's really more for the wood. And what it does is one of those chemicals that gets down inside the wood and it microfills all the little crevices inside of it so that it makes it so much easier of a sanding. That crevice right there is going to be a turd. So let's get that out that way. Okay, it's funny, I'm on YouTube right now, and the Facebook guys are texting me, or PMing me, while I'm here. Let me see if it's anything super important. I got this. I got this one guy on Facebook. I'm not saying anything bad, but he's not from here. You know what I'm trying to say? And uh, he says hi to me every day. I guess I become his pen pal, you know. Mm -mm -mm. You got to get this stuff closed up as soon as you can. Are you? We'll be standing out in the bushes, screaming at the dogs. It'll get you high. All right. Abernet is done. Sanding sealer is on. <coughs> now we're going to go to the Now we're going to go to the wet sandings. 
I'm gonna let this dry for a minute. All right, I'm gonna come over here and read some comments. Uh, you said, okay, we got that. Tom is right. Uh, looks like caramel apple candy. While I'm waiting on this to dry, y'all wanna ask me anything? I'll organize these real quick. Green, purple, blue, pink. I guess not. Okay.
Guys, can y'all hear me okay? I'm seeing my down here at the bottom I can see my audio and it says it is going it's it's perfect so I'm making sure you guys can hear me okay Okay, Tom, Michael, yep, okay. I tell you what, I know this sounds crazy, but you know, the normal American family right now, they're they're sitting at the house and they're going crazy. You know, I've kind of already dwindled into my lifestyle for you know being retired. You know, you take a, you take a, let me see what this says. I'm adding mojo juice to it, Michael. No, it's just regular water. Um, <laughs> the question is, is are you using regular water or do you add something to it? It's just good old fashioned everyday tap water. The, the good thing about using your water is 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 you need to clean it out you know once or twice a day because this grit gets in there and you can be running on a 5,000 grit pad but you've got residue on there from 150 you know so you gotta make sure that you keep it cleaned off but anyway you know I'm 60 years old and uh, I feel like I'm about 32. And uh, single. So I do my own thing, my own time schedule. Just lifestyle that I'm in. And I just have a blast doing what the hell I'm doing. I'm going to show you guys something that I showed the group earlier when you guys weren't here. I'll show you an oops. Something I made a mistake on. I tried to get this in. Um, I made this block yesterday. Looks great. Uh, blue snow, red glitter, lots and lots and lots of interference. And I poured it into the mold, got it all set, got the pressure points on it, pulled it out this morning. And if you can see this, it shifted up in the pressure pot. And this came over to here, the back side of it. This now is a paperweight. Tom, this is the blue one I was going to work on. Let me see if you guys can see this. Yeah, this is the blue one that I was going to work on, but I thought, you know, we just work on that green one. Yeah. <laughs> Daughter says, she says, that's pretty. Well, I tell you what, wait till it's done, and then we'll make it pretty for you. 
we still got a lot of steps to go. We're, we're about three quarters of the way done right now. <coughs> I know that other shape brush guys, they don't take these steps. I know that. And, and you know, that's okay. You know. But to me, I know the difference. And if I know the difference, I just, in good conscience, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about them. No, not happening. Uh, but for me, I have to know that each one of these steps has a reason that I'm doing all of this. And I want them perfect. I don't want them close, you know. I don't want them like, you know, close but no cigar. I want them perfect. I had a guy. I had a. I had put a. I put a, a, a brush up on um, my oops fact my oops site. You know, I don't know if you've ever been to my site. I have a little section there. It's called oops. Those are the ones that are okie dokie. They're structurally sound, but something about them I don't like. Something that happened. Something went wrong. Something happened, you know. But they're fine to use. And I had a guy that emailed me and he he bought this one and he says, "Why does this an oops?" And I said, "Well, when I drilled into the hole for the knot hole, you know, I could see about three millimeters of resin." He said, couldn't you just take in a Sharpie and just colored it in? I said, yeah. But to me, that's just not right, you know? I made the mistake. I own it. It's mine. And, uh, you know, it's a $185 brush handle. And uh, I sold it to him for $50, bucks, you know? Just this cost of goods. Last sanding pad. Okay, this sanding pad right here, Michael, since you're new at this with us, this particular one, it's really not a sander. It's it's really a polisher. But this right here is 12,000 grit. You know, when you go to the sanding stores and you're looking for 120, 180, 220. Okay, this is 12,000. This is a polisher. This makes that acrylic resin shine, and it makes this wood shine like a piece of glass. Okay, now we've gone down to 12,000 grit. Let's get this out. I'm going to clean this water off of my pad real quick. This actually, this pad came from my grandkids. You know, it was one of those times where, you know, the wife and the mom and the kids were all playing with Play-Doh and stuff, and we got this pad for them. They used it. Now they're all grown up, and they left, you know, and I cleaned everything, and I said, hey, this will work on my lathe. Keep water off of it. All right, now this... It, uh, yeah, Tom, that was. That was that uh, amber with the green snow. Yeah, that was it. Uh, it went out the door yesterday. That blue and white one, though, is up there on there right now on the oops section. It's uh, that white resin on it. It just dropped. I don't know why, but it did.
Okay, Michael, just so you know, uh, the reason I'm putting this on there, this is aluminum wheel polish. This particular one goes to 25,000 grit. And this one is aluminum wheel polish, and it goes to 28,000 grit. And I'm putting it on here to do a final polish before I get to my final polish. Okay, 25,000 grit's done, 28,000 grit is done. Woo! Look at that sparkle. Now, let's take it from really cool to oh my goodness. You were looking at that one? Well, it's going to Oregon. <laughs> okay. Let me just come up here and give you guys an idea of what this looks like right now. Okay, so now, 28 millimeter. What I gotta do is Let's do some polishing.
Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? There's always this 10 second delay. Calling on Michael. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. This is now polished. And I'm going to bring this thing all the way up so you guys can see the caverns that are inside of this thing. Michael, you can ask your own question. Does Light have any problem going through that? Okay, that way you can kind of get an idea. That resin comes all the way through here and stops right there at that lip, at the bottom of it. That's a for a 28 millimeter hole. I've still got to do some touch up work on this ledge right here and on the underside of it. But you see how this side here is a little bit shorter than this side. That's a little mushroom effect. I'm giving it. That's not a bad looking little uh, handle there. Not bad. That's the way you guys are catching up. like it Michael Tom says it looks cool now here's the question a lot of people ask me they say Gary what makes a signature series on this okay believe it or not that is a signature series you cannot duplicate this one in any way. It's number one. It is from this design. If you guys can see, can y'all see the similarities there? Yes. This head is going to be larger than the rest. But the general outline is the same. Uh, between the burl looks like a cave point. That's, that's the effect I'm going through, Michael. Exactly. Uh, this head's going to be a little bit larger than this one. Uh, only reason for it is because I was going for a larger size. But uh, this is my ground zero. This is my go-to. This is the finished product. So, yeah. I think it looks pretty cool. The only problem with making these that shiny is when you go to photograph them, you know, you see your ugly face in them when you're taking the picture. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Tom, you're very welcome, sir. You're very, very welcome. Uh, you know, I'm not going to save that blue one for the next one. I'll, I'll have another one for the next one. But yeah. <laughs> Michael's laughing because I got my ugly face in a photo sometimes. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. That's a problem. But yeah, these suckers are incredibly shiny. Michael, have you ever bought one of mine? I don't remember. I don't remember. I 
I know Tom has one. Tom's got a really cool purple one. So you have Michael. Ah! You got an Amber Oops. Is that coming to you? You got that Amber one. You're in Oregon, if I'm not mistaken. You're in Texas. Oh shit. You're another red leg redneck like me. I'm in Texas. Why did I think Oregon? You know when you get five or six of these sitting up on top of a table, you start to forget. That's right. Dyed blue wood and green top. Your daughter wanted the purple. Yes, now I remember. So, Michael, are you down in the Houston area or are you in the North Texas? Where are you at? Ah, clean. You're down in the Houston area. Central Texas, Austin. Well, I'm from originally from Odessa and then moved to Austin to play for a football team there called the University of Texas. And then I moved to North Texas and I've been here pretty much ever since. So I have lived in Austin. Uh, when I was there, 6th Street was just starting up. I mean, it was just deserted buildings, you know, back in the mid-70s. Cool. Well, guys, it's been fun. It's been a pleasure. Michael, I'm glad you got yours. It's coming to you. I remember I just sent it out. Uh, you're going to enjoy that it's you're going to enjoy it and it's going to give you a lot of years there's no structurally things wrong with it it's perfect uh that bad boy that you're getting was scheduled to be an absolute signature series and uh i'm telling you now you can hear it from me and from my lips when i drilled out that drill hole when i drilled it out and i saw that resin i just went oh my goodness i screwed up what I should have done is I should have put a spacer down at the bottom of it to raise it so that way when I drilled it, it would not have hit that resin. All right, guys, y'all have fun. Take care. And I'm going to head back over to Facebook for a few minutes, and then uh, I'm going to catch some lunch. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to wash the car or mow the yard or both. One of the two. Or both. Who knows? Guys, be good.